Turn, if you would, to Deuteronomy chapter number 22. Because this is tied in with this story, with, at least when people think that he's forcing her. The God-haters have, have a warped view of the Bible where they'll, they'll, they'll claim that you know, the Bible says that if a man forces a woman, then he must marry her. Right? And if you've, if you've seen atheists and just other people who despise God's word, and want to try to make fun of it, they'll say, oh yeah, the, Bible's, the Bible promotes you know, people when they rape someone that they just need to marry them, and that's God's law, and they try to, try to mock God's law and say that that's what the Bible says, but that's not what the Bible says. We're going to see what the Bible says about this, this subject, about a man forcing another, another woman, a, a woman. Verse number 22 says, If a man be found... Lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil from Israel. So this is covering adultery, right? This woman's already married. This guy goes and he lies with her, and it says nothing about forcing her, but this he lies. He commits adultery with her. Well, what happens when they're found out? You put the woman and the man both to death, the adulterer and the adulteress. Amen. That's what God's law says. Verse 23. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. Again, committing adultery. But what they're explaining here is this is someone who's married, but they haven't consummated the marriage yet of coming together and having that physical act. They've been married. Just like Joseph and Mary were espoused, they were married. But before they came together, that's when Mary was conceived of the Holy Ghost. She was still a virgin, even though they were married. Now, it's harder to understand that in our culture because normally, even if people are virgin going into marriage, that, that consummation happens really quickly, typically after a marriage. But in these days, that wasn't the way they did it. There was tend to be a longer time period would go by between the marriage and the actual consummation of the marriage. So he's just explaining here that, look, even if she's a virgin and they haven't consummated the marriage yet and someone goes and lies with her, then they're both going to be put to death. And what they're getting into now is, well, if they're in the city, you know, and she's a virgin, she can't claim that he forced her because within the city, you have to just, I mean, all you got to do is scream out and cry out because they're close enough together. Someone's going to hear you and they're going to know. And then you're, you know, someone will, will, will be able to say, do something about it and say, you know, stop that event from happening or whatever and, and your name will be clear because you didn't really want it to happen. And it, and it continues on and explains it even further. Verse 25, But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her, so now we're seeing the forcing, right? This is something that is definitely against the will of the woman. If a man forces this woman, it says, and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. So it's saying, you know, you don't, you don't punish the woman. She didn't want it. She was forced into this. But the man's going to be put to death. So the rapist gets the death penalty, according to the Bible. Amen. That's the way it should be today also. But look what it says, verse 26. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this man saying, when someone else lies in wait and they kill their, you know, kill someone else, that's just like this when they when someone when the rapist comes and, and just you know forces a woman. It's the same thing that you know she's not guilty of anything. We see this already in the Bible, spelling out when he forces her, right? This is the punishment. It doesn't say he's then gonna marry her, does it? No, it says that he's going to be put to death, but nothing's going to be done to the woman because she didn't do anything wrong. Verse 27, For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. So you just assume, you have to, you're going to have to assume that she cried out because when she's out away from everybody, you, you're not going to be able to prove that she didn't cry out. right? But this is even saying if, when he forces her. 
Right? This isn't saying it's consensual. This is saying he forced her. They were out in the field and no one even knew that he forced her because she cried out, but there was no one around to hear her. Verse 28, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife. Because he hath humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. And it says, a man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. So this, these verses are the ones that people will go to to try to say, oh yeah, the Bible teaches that you know, the rapist has, is, is, is supposed to marry the woman that he rapes. This is ridiculous. Let's look at the wording of what this says. Because we already dealt with the consequence of the rapist. It's death. But this says, if a man find a damsel as a virgin, which is not betrothed, then lay hold on her. So here, lay hold on her. Does that mean he forces her? No. Just laying hold on someone, you know, holding them, grabbing them. I mean, in order to commit this act, you're going to have to lay a hold, you know, hold the person anyways, right? It says, lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found. This is fornication. He finds a girl that he likes takes hold on her and says, come on, let's, you know, let's go do this or whatever, and they go do it. And then someone finds out about it. He's saying, okay, well, you commit fornication, but now you need to pay the dowry unto the father, the 50 shekels of silver, and you have to marry that girl because you've already done the act, but you, you've got to make it right now and, and marry her and saying, you can't divorce her. You, know, you, 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 gotta, you, know, you decided to do this act preemptively now you have to marry her and, and you're going to stay together and that's God's law. So it's not that hard to understand, but the reason why that people say that so much, it's not because of what the King James Bible says. I have here in my pulpit the, a parallel Bible. This one is the NIV and the Living Bible. And then this one that I received, I, I have a cross that says it's a good news Bible, I have the bad news Bible. This is the one I received in my Presbyterian church when I went through confirmation. This was, this was that fun Bible that they gave me to read because, you know, it's a little bit easier to understand, right? I mean, I was, I was a teenager and the Bible is just real difficult to understand. So they gave me this Bible that says in verse 28 of Deuteronomy 22, suppose a man is caught raping a girl who is not engaged. He is to pay the girl's father of the bride price of 50 pieces of silver and she is to become his wife. Because he forced her to have intercourse with him, he can never divorce her as long as he lives. Isn't that just so easy to understand now? Isn't it great to hear that God's word, now it's God's holy law is promoting people when they rape somebody. Now you just got to marry him. Hey, great woman, I just got raped. Now I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this person. He can never divorce me. Isn't that good news? That's, that's great news, right? From the good news Bible. The good news of God's law. If a man rapes me, now I have to just spend my rest of my life with him. It's ridiculous. This is trash. The NIV, the new, li the, the living version, or the, the, the living Bible too, same exact thing. It says, if a man rapes a girl who is not engaged and is caught in the act, he must pay a fine to the girl's father and marry her. He may never divorce her. That was the Living Bible. NIV says, if a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and rapes her, and they are discovered, he shall pay the girl's father 50 shekels of silver. He must marry the girl, for he has violated her. He can never divorce her as long as he lives. This is a joke. And this is, you know, when people bring, try to bring up and say, oh yeah, the Bible says that... Uh, if a man rapes a woman, then he has to marry her and they're going to be stay together. And that's, that's what the Bible says. No, that's not what the Bible says. That's what these perversions say. These perverted, 
twisted words that are not the Bible, that is Satan's attack on God's word, says that garbage. But look at how much damage these beloved versions have brought in the reproach against God's holy commandments. These do. Don't think, oh, it's just a little bit easier to understand. It says that if a man rapes a woman, he has to marry her. That is a joke. It's a disgrace. It's a shame. God's word does not say anything like that. Amen. Don't get fooled by these false perversions. It's not just a minor difference. Well, you believe that. I believe this. No. That's a huge difference in the Bible. Someone committing fornication versus somebody raping somebody is a world of difference. Amen. God's law is perfect. But this is what the naysayers will say and the, and the, and the mockers will, will turn to to say, see, look at how ridiculous your Bible is. What kind of God is that? And with that, I'd have to agree with them if that's what they said, but that's not what the Bible says. It all, and, and these books are so stupid too because when you read them, it already says that in the previous verse, if a man forces a woman you know, and rapes her, then he's going to be put to death, but not her. It's when a woman committed adultery, right? A man and a woman, they both got put to death. When this guy rapes someone, he gets put to death because it says that he forces her. But then in the next verse, it's saying, look, then if people who aren't, who aren't married commit fornication, then they have to get married. It's not that difficult to understand. But why would he repeat basically the same thing? And in one instance, it's a death penalty for the man. The other one, he's got to marry her. It, it just doesn't even make any sense.